This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So I quickly, uh, one topic today I'm going to cover that is on Postman. And uh, some couple of people were asking about that, how to write the test cases in Postman. And I have seen some of the uh, questions also on my blog, on my Facebook page, as well as I'm getting some mails that can you please create one basic video that how to write a test case in Postman. So I'm pretty much sure that, okay, I'm expecting that, okay, you guys are already aware about Postman, how to send a request, how to get the response. And, uh, but after that, Postman, not only for sending a request and getting a response, you can write some script over there. You can write some JavaScript as well as you can uh, test and you can write some assertions over there as well. It means ultimately you can write the test cases against your response. So very quick thing, I'll tell you that I'm going to cover one post call that I'm going to create a user and I'm taking one example from this particular API that go res.go.in and uh, so I just copy paste this particular URL and I'm going to create a user. So first I'll tell you how to create a basic user from this particular API. So this particular API is having all these uh, different, uh, you know, uh, APIs are available, get, post, put, and delete. And then I'll be using this particular API to create a new user. So you simply write something like this. This is the URL. And here we need to pass, uh, first of all, authorization. So as a header, we have to pass the authorization. So I simply pass my authorization as a bearer token. And this bearer token, you can generate on this particular site. So this authorization token is already available with me. And I just go to API access, and this is the access token I'll be using it. And this is a bearer token. So I'll be using as a bearer token. You guys can generate your own token, okay, on this particular site, and you can execute, okay, different APIs okay from gores.co.in it's very simple very straightforward very simple apis are available and then to create a user we have to pass as a body as a json so i'll select body go to raw go to uh, json and here we have to pass a json payload over here so i have already created some payload that how to send a particular uh, json so i'll do one thing i just copy paste something like this let's see this is the kind of payload guys that you have to pass. Okay, so uh, like this and uh, yeah. So here what exactly we have to do that we have to pass some, let's see some data about any specific user. Let's see I'm passing that uh, Tom, Peter at the rate gmail.com. When you send this particular request with this particular body, to this particular uh, service URL with the post call and the header is authorization, content type is application JSON. What exactly it will do that it will create a user. So let's see it is working or not. So I'm gonna create a user and you see that, okay, I'm getting 200 response code and it's saying everything worked as expected and the user actually got created over here. Tom Peter at gmail.com, first name, last name, date of birth, address, whatever that you have given, automatically it will be created along with this particular ID also. Now we have got the, we have got the particular user creation part. Now you can see there is one tab is over here, test tab. You click on this particular test and here you can write some JavaScript. So Postman uses JavaScript library and you can write some test cases over here with the help of some JavaScript library. And the moment you click on test, here in the <clears throat> right hand side, you will see some code samples snippets are available. So let's see able to check what exactly the status code. So you simply click on this status code is 200 or not. So you click on it automatically one sample code will be generated over here. And this is a method name PM is the object of object reference of the uh, postman PM means the postman dot test means this is a test case just like in test ng we have at the rate test annotation. And then this is a function name that is status code is 200 or not. So you can write any function name, whatever the name you want to give. And then it's saying PM dot response object go to to have the status should be 200. Right now you execute this particular uh, API once again. Every time what we have to do, we have to change the let's see email ID. So now next time because this user already got created. Now next time we have to give a new email ID and I'm sending the request. And then you see the response. 
I'm getting the <clears throat> response that, okay, now this time a new user got created and here it will create one test result tab over here and it's saying the status code is 200 that has got passed, right? So this is something really good that this is a simple test case, let's see, I have written. Now I want to write some other test case. Let's see, I want to check that, okay, what exactly the value of, uh, what exactly the value of success? Success should be true over here. So how will you write a test case for that? So for that, I'll just scroll down and then you can see that uh, one response body JSON value check over here. You just click on it, one code snippet will be generated. And then this is a test name, your test name. Let's see, I'm going to check that uh, verify success value is true something like this and then this is a test pm dot test and then here what exactly we have to do pm dot response go to the response and get the json object stored in this particular variable that is json data variable and this is the assertion just like in a test ng assertion same thing we are using pm dot expect json data which data that you are expecting i'm expecting go to underscore meta from this particular meta you go to dot success dot success and then it should be equal to true so we have to write instead of 100 i'll be writing two fine and then you hit this particular api once again but next time again we have to change the email id that i'm passing to this time and then you send the request fine and you see that again i'm getting a new user got created i'm getting a proper response 200 okay and the test results also, both the test cases you can see got passed. The status code is 200, verify success value is true or not. Right, so like this guys, you can write some different test cases over here like this. There are some different content type and all those things also. Response time is less than 200 milliseconds. Let's see if you want to write response time, okay, within 200 milliseconds or 300 milliseconds. So let's say I'm writing response time should be within 400 milliseconds. I'll be writing another test case like this. Okay, like this. Then one thing if you notice that every time as a body, we have to pass one variable that is called tompeter2 at the red gmail.com. This particular email ID should be unique. Maybe first name, last name, gender, date of birth can be same, but email ID should be unique. Whenever you are going to send a post request, whenever you want to create a new user, you have to send a new email ID every time. So this is a this is a pain point that every time I have to change it manually. So this also you can automate actually. So how to do that? So for automating, you exactly go to one thing that pre-request script. This particular tab, you click on it. Here also you can write some JavaScript library. You can write some JavaScript code with the help of Postman JavaScript library. And then pre-request script means before executing your API, before hitting the API, before that, what exactly you want to do that? This is just like add the red before method or add the red before, before test in test ng or j unit. So how exactly you can write over here? So what you need to do, you simple create one random method, okay, which will generate one random number. And then what exactly we will do, we will append that particular random number over here like this. Okay, so how to do this? So for doing this, I'll be creating some one variable. Let's see one variable name is random is equal to i'll be using math class from the javascript and then i'll be using a random method like this convert that into a two string of 36 character something like this and uh, 36 base character and then i'll be using a substring and substring of two i'll be using it so simple method i have created which will generate a random number and then what exactly i'll be doing that i'll be creating another variable like email uh, let's see email address variable is equal to what exactly email address. So I want that, okay, my email address should be like this, Tom, plus whatever the random number we are getting, I'll append with Tom plus in double quotes, I'll be writing at the rate gmail.com. So what will happen? Whatever the random number is there, let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever the random number is coming. It will be appended with Tom. Let's say Tom123 uh, at the rate gmail.com. So every time I'll be getting a new email ID. 
And once we get this particular email ID, what exactly I'll be doing? I'll be doing PM dot. Okay, I'll be generating one environment variable. So I'm going to set one environment variable over here as well. So you simply click on set an environment variable. So what is your environment variable key? So let's see my key will be email address. I'll be using the same key and the value should be this. Okay, it means at the runtime, create this particular email address an environment variable which will be applicable for for your uh, postman environment variable and then you can use this particular environment variable anytime and then you pass the same email address that you have generated a unique a dynamic email address that you have generated with the help of random number assign the value to this, to this particular email address field and then once this is done you go back to sorry you go back to body and here over here you remove this guy and what you need to do, I'm putting one curly braces like this, double curly braces like this. And here, whatever, okay, the email ID that you are going to use it, whatever the environment variable. So this is the environment variable, I'll be using it. So I'll just copy paste this particular environment variable over here, email address, right? Okay, then what, what will happen when you hit this particular API? random number will be generated a email id with random number will be generated i'm going to set one environment variable and then it will go to body and then the same environment variable value i'm going to pick it up over here and then email address will be stored over here and after that the same email id i'm going to verify in my test so how will you verify in your test so to verify this thing what you have to do same thing i'll be creating one more let's see uh, json value check over here and I know that, okay, inside the body, email ID is coming over here like this. So what exactly I'll be doing that I'll write one test, change the test name is verify email ID value, something like this. And then json.data dot result, this is coming under result, result dot email ID dot email or whatever the key is there, key it should be equal to what so it should be equal to whatever the environment variable that you have created actually it should be equal to that so we have one more snippet is over here that is called get an environment variable like this and what is your key my key is this that you have actually created over here like this this is the email address is the key for your environment variable like this and then i'll be using this entire environment variable I'll be using this should be equal to this like this okay so this is a test case simple test case that see I have written that verify email ID value I'll repeat result dot email it should be equal to so how will you get how will you reach at the email field in the body you just need to go to result go to email and this is the email ID and then it should be equal to whatever the environment variable that you have get it so first we have set it with the help of Prerequisites. This is called setter, and now inside the test, I'm using a, a getter over here. Dot get method, and which get this is the key. This is just like reading the properties file. Dot <clears throat> set property and dot get property, like that. And then you hit this particular API, and then we'll see if it is working or not. So you run it, and you scroll down, and you see that this time a random number. You can see that Tom something like this got generated at the rate gmail.com and if you see how many test cases got passed you see four test cases were there all the four test cases got passed verify email id value response time is less than 400 milliseconds success value is also true <clears throat> and the status code is also 200 so like this guys you can easily write a very straightforward very simple test cases like that that's why i really like this particular postman tool and if you don't want to use rest assured or any http client or java simple you can come over here and you can hit the apis and in the postman itself you can execute i mean you can write really good test cases and you can uh, write some really good smart test cases and execute directly from here as well like that and n number of test cases you can write for your other assertions from the body as well like that and here you can do some parameterization part also okay and simple basic script you can generate with the help of random number and all those things easily you guys can do it okay but make sure whenever you are using it you have to write it inside the curly brackets like this
within double quotes because email will be passed as a string. So we have to write within double quotes over here like this. So this is a small topic I really wanted to cover, guys. So please, um, uh, if you have any questions, let me know and please try all these basic, basic things in Postman. Definitely, it will help you a lot. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. There is a subscribe button is there. You can click on it and there is a, a bell icon is also there. If you are not getting any notification from my channel, if you press that particular bell icon, immediately you will be getting a notified. You will be notified with a new video over there. Okay, so that you won't miss any new video over there. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for watching this particular video and keep watching Naveen Automation Labs.